Italy. We don't do this sort of thing very often, but this is so unusual that we thought we should. A judge in Italy, listen to this, uh, she's Assistant Secretary of the Criminal Bar Association, a judge in Italy has cleared a bloke for groping an air hostess, uh, or as we would call it, a member of air crew, um, as it took her 20 seconds to react. Incred extraordinary. Uh, let's find out what on earth is going on. Chloe, very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Thank you very much for having me. Not at all. I mean, uh, this is a weird case, isn't it? I mean, I don't think even in this country you'd get... Um, and most of the doddery old judges, I think, have, have shuffled off, haven't they? We don't have them anymore here, but we used to. I remember we used to do these stories all the time where some judge would sort of completely misread the room. Um, but this is pretty amazing, even for Italy, isn't it? It is. It's quite an extraordinary case. The um, judge, as I understand it, uh, kicked the case out after making a decision that the woman hadn't reacted in a timely way. The um, suggestion was that she didn't react for over 20 seconds, having first been assaulted. Right. Just picking you up there, um, I, I don't think there's any need for any of your viewers to be concerned about this happening in the UK. Um, in rape trials in England and Wales, our judges receive specialist training to overcome these difficulties. Yes. Um, judges are empowered to give directions to juries, warnings, if you like, about making false assumptions, yeah. stereotyping. And more specifically about addressing rape myths, for want of a better right. way of putting it. Yeah, but my point was that simply uh, there used to be, in, 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 in Britain, there were occasionally judges who did act a bit like that. They don't do it anymore, and I'm sure for all the reasons that you've just said. Um, I think in, in the past, yes, but there's been a great deal of work in the criminal justice system to overcome those difficulties. Yeah. Um, as I say, judges receive specialist training from the Judicial College. There's a, a great amount of input that, that gets coordinated through the Judicial College into what um, information jurors receive. So whenever a, a jury panel goes out to deliberate, um, a witness and a defendant, for that matter, can be confident that if there is a complaint like this, um, those sorts of issues have already been addressed. The issue here, I think, is that it was a single judge making the decision, and, and it seems that, unfortunately, perhaps those misconceptions about how people do react um, in the wake of an assault like that um, should be more immediate. And as we all know, that's just not the case. People don't react in a uniformed way. Right. Well, this is the thing. I mean, according to the report I'm reading here, it was said that the man uh, touched, kissed and massaged her while the woman, for some 30 seconds, continued to browse and read the documents that she was reading without expressing dissent. But as her lawyer said, um, you know, it's entirely natural for somebody to remain petrified and sort of paralysed in that situation. So it's hard to, it's hard to believe the judge has come up with this, really. Yeah, it seems, from our perspective, um, very inconsistent with what we know now about um, the way in which victims of assaults like this do react. Yeah. Um, it, with, it's important to say, though, for those who are listening, we don't have a copy of a written decision from the judge yeah. or, indeed, a, a lot of information about the wider context in, involved in his decision. Um, but looking at it at face value, it does seem to be a, um, a somewhat inconsistent decision with what we know more generally about cases like yeah. rape, serious sexual assaults like this. Right. And also it was in a work situation as well, because the guy was a union official. She had gone to see him about some dispute to do with her job. So it, was, it wasn't even like, it didn't happen. I'm not saying that, that would make it any better or, or worse. It's just that it actually happened in a work situation, which would make it even more ridiculous. Yes, and I think there's something to be said for the fact that there might well be a power dynamic at play here. Yeah. Um, it's difficult to say, isn't it? Because the reports that we're looking at are a single piece of information that's been influenced by what the, the journalist has said, uh -huh. rather than us being sat in court listening to it firsthand. Um, and as you'll know, Mike, when you're sat in court, ju jurors are certainly asked to only concentrate on the evidence they hear mm. in court. And so um, you can understand why my response is somewhat more, more neutral without us knowing yeah. all of the facts of the case. No, sure, I absolutely get that. But good to talk to you, Chloe. Thank you very much indeed. Chloe Ashley there, Assistant Secretary at the Criminal Bar Association.